Welcome to Dragon's Lair Update, the only show dedicated to Howard Community College Athletics. This month, HCC competes for the Track and Field National Championship, Men's Lacrosse takes on Catonsville, and Coach Carey's Dragons battle Hartford. We'll start with Track and Field. Howard hosts the NJCAA National Championship. Bruce Hoosier anchors our track and field coverage. Thanks, Diane. I'm here with Howard's assistant coach, Olympic silver medalist Sanjay Ayer. The Dragons Internationals as the number one program in the country. Coach Ayer, how did you prepare your training group for this meet? Well, Bruce, I implemented a Olympic caliber training program for my sprinters. I gave my athletes vision and instilled in them faith and belief that we could be champions. I knew if my athletes believed in me, they would work hard. I professed this to them in an emotional team meeting at the start of the outdoor season. They bought into my belief that they could be national champions, and I could see it in their eyes the day before nationals that they were ready to go. This is crunch time. We will not fall apart. We had team meetings. I bonded them together. We prayed a lot, and I had them practice faith. faith we could be national champions. Jaleel Petgrave has shined all season. What makes Jaleel a unique talent? Well, Bruce, after the first month of coaching Petgrave, I saw the qualities and tenacities that could make him an Olympic talent one day. Jaleel possesses great speed, endurance, and has the mental capacity to face fierce competition in any situation. I told Jaleel we are going after Project 4 gold medals. 19 schools are set to descend on Howard Community College for the NJCAA National Championship. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. Men's 10,000 meter run. Harper's Colin Weber passes Howard's Philagot Dinku. Weber wins first place and scores 10 points for the two-time defending national champions. Decathlon 400 meter dash. Howard's Jonathan Forney takes the lead. Before the race, I told Jonathan how to execute, and he did. That's a personal best of 52 seconds flat. Here's the four by 800 meter relay. Harper ran a great strategic race using their workhorse, Troy Cunningham, on the first leg. Harper has a big lead heading into the third leg. You are about to see the determination of Andrew Scrappy Parlett. This is a young man who fights to the finish. Andrew Parlett, willing to go to war and bring Howard back into the race. Edgar Props is now in striking position to capture silver. Harper wins the event, but Edgar Props finishes strong and the Dragons get eight points. Hammer throw. Peter Collins PRs at National with a 48.4 meter performance. Teammate Chris Nash finishes in second place. Chris and Peter scored 14 points there. Those two guys were great additions to the team. Matt Stovall caught up with Chris Nash and Peter Collins. All right, so let's talk a little about your strategy going into this event. Yeah, I wanted to go out and open up big. I was hoping to get that, that meet, national meet record. It was uh, just over my PR. Went out and I fouled my first throw. Took a little off on the two turn and, and ended up uh, making finals and getting back after it after that. And, uh, a couple fouls that would have that won the meet, but stuff happens and need to get better next time. So after you, uh, you made the finals, uh, what's going through your head when you're getting ready to, I saw a lot of intensity in your face. What's going through your head then? A lot of intensity, a little bit of frustration. You try to shrug off, but I mean, it's a great atmosphere. The team actually came over. I think it was the first time they've seen us do anything all year. So it was, it was nice to have people out there and supporting us. I mean, it, it helped a lot. Talk a little about your relationship with Chris. Uh, me and Chris know each other since before here, actually. We met in high school through uh, one of his coaches, actually my coach too, when I was younger, uh, Nick Agoras. So we've been throwing with each other for probably three years all together now. So we've known each other, we're comfortable with each other, you know, kind of got the same personalities, a little bit crazy, a little bit out there at times. So both love to hit the weight room. So we were lifting all winter, all, you know, straight through the season. So it kind of brought the chemistry more so than it already was because there, there was already a foundation there. It wasn't like we came into this to the school not knowing each other. So how did it feel seeing Mr. Forney do so well today? Ah, oh, it was great actually. He's, he's, me and him actually are going to be really good friends. So coming out here at nine, he wound up getting first in the uh, in the hundred for the decathlon. Then we helped him. We've been helping him all year with his throws, you know, getting better with that. So I mean, it was really cool. It was actually really fun to see that. Day two, Jonathan Forney captures silver in the decathlon. Jonathan is all about the team, not about himself. He's the type of athlete who will put his body on the line all the time. So how'd you feel coming into the second uh, day two of the decathlon? 
Day two, honestly, I mean, I had a really good first day. I had three PRs. Um, I mean, I felt good, but coming in day two, I felt better than I thought I should have. I could, you know, still move, but then once I started hitting the events, I could tell I was pretty mentally worn out. I was in love, having a little trouble with the focus and everything. So, so how were you able to focus and, and pull in second place? I uh, just I kept thinking about the the big goal. You know, we gotta we're trying to win this as a team, first team to ever do it. And you know, we need as many points as possible. So I dug down deep and I found what I needed to. Here's the triple jump. Darius Bell produces a 14.55 meter effort, earning silver and eight points for Howard. The gold goes to Danny Holland of Suffolk. Men's high jump, Darius Bell won gold. Now he's attempting a national record. Darius Bell clears 2.1 meters. His name is Mr. Do-It-All. Darius is the most talented athlete competing at nationals. Expect great things at the D1 or pro level. All right, Darius, you got the, the national record for the high jump. How does it feel? Yeah, uh, it feels good. It feels real good. Like, I mean, I'm honored to even be in this vicinity with everyone here that was, you know, competing with me. You know, I had some great competitors and, uh, Honestly, I just, I'm just grateful and thankful. Like, I just give all the glory to God, as always. I wanted to ask you, you have a little ritual before you jump. What's, the, what's your little pre-jump ritual all about? Oh, well, my grandma, she passed away uh, last October. So I stopped uh, pretty much working out and doing everything. And then, like, I just had to snap back and remember, like, she was, like, a real uh, church-going woman. So, like, uh, she would always have me pray before anything that I do. So before I do triple, long, anything before I start, I always, you know, do my cross, kiss it up to her, because I know she's looking down on me. All right, so uh, how'd you, you had to come, you did the triple jump, then you had to come right around and do the, the high jump. How'd yeah. you feel coming into the high jump? I was nervous, man. I didn't know if I was actually even gonna be able to continue jumping, you know, because like, like my whole body, I'm still kind of shaky. Like everything is just shaking in my allergies. It's just, <laughs> it's just bad. <laughs> But, um, I mean, as I, I always say, you know, I just feel like God just really pushed me through it, you know, even though that wasn't the best jump that I've ever done this whole year, but still he allowed me to, you know, get a record under my belt. So that's the first record I've ever broken. So <laughs> I feel really good about that. <laughs> Day three of nationals, Howard leads the team rankings. Harper is in second. Men shot put, Chris Nash scores another five points for the Dragons. Brian Edwards of Alfred State throws 13.95 meters and finishes in third place. Nassau's Andre Hunter managed 14.29, enough to earn silver. Robert Howard puts it 14.84 meters and scores 10 points for Alfred State. They're now in third place. Here's the 100 meter dash. Howard's James Lang is in lane four. Great technique in the first 60 meters from James Lang. He's running a close race with Wendell Williams from Herkimer in lane five. Williams pulls away in the last 10 meters and wins it. 800 meter run, Edgar Probst scores 10 points for Howard. Edgar has enormous talent. He ran a tactically efficient race, 155 seconds flat and came out victorious. 200 meter dash, Jaleel Peckrave and James Lang in maroon are looking to score for Howard. Into the home straightaway. Petgrave and Wendell Williams lead the pack. Jaleel showed great speed endurance after 150 meters to capture the gold medal. Petgrave wins it for Howard. Here's the men's 5,000 meter run. Philagat Dinku passes Colin Weber and Nick Modlin of Harper. Philagat ran a tactically good race. The strategy is to approach this as a team run. Phil Legat and Andrew had to fend off the Harper runners throughout the entire race. Phil Legat Dinku claims the gold medal and wins 10 points for the Dragons. With three events to go, Howard extends their lead in the race for the national championship. This is the race for third place. Andrew Parlett and Nick Modlin go head to head. Once again, you see the determination of Andrew Scrappy Parlett. Scrappy fights to the finish and overtakes Modlin, passing him on the line. 
action from the 4 by 400 meter relay. Coach Air, what was your strategy? I wanted my second best 400 meter runner to lead off. I knew Edgar would run a strong tactical race and get us out of traffic. Second leg, Javon Robeson had to have great speed and detach from the rest of the runners. Harper's in the lead, Prince George's second, Howard's in third, Kester Chase of Kingsborough flies by everyone. Roberson hands it off to Darius Bell. On the third leg, you need a punisher, an athlete that likes to chase, runs with heart. Darius Bell fits these characteristics perfectly. He was the only man suited for this leg. I wanted Darius to keep it close so Petgrave could do a cleanup job on the anchor leg. Bell moves Howard into second place, heading into the anchor leg. Bell gives it to Petgrave. Fourth leg, you want a steady, composed athlete. Before the guys went out, I told them we were going after the national record. I knew that we might be behind on the anchor leg, so that's why I placed Jaleel Petgrave there. I knew that if any runner had a lead on him, he would have caught them. Project 4 gold medals has been accomplished. Petgrave is all alone in front! Petgrave wins it for Howard! The Dragons are national champions! Let's go back to Matt Stovall for the Dragon Sports Radio Report. How's it feel to win this national championship for HCC? Um, it's a blessing. I feel like we accomplished something we never did before, and it, it feels really, really good. I feel I'm too happy for words right now. So. One of my favorite moments was watching you run the anchor leg of the 4x4 relay. Talk about, take us through that race. The 4x4 is my favorite race, I think. Um, I never get tired, really, so... I was pretty pumped calling my my uh, my teammate in, so I was really excited going in. I knew I was going to catch a dude because I just get really pumped off it, so it felt really good. It felt really good um, at the end of the race. That I called him, and it came down to that. So, and the first and second and third leg did their thing. It did their part. Everything was perfect, and we, we, got, we got the win off it. So it was, it was a great feeling. So coming in, your team was ranked number one. Mentally, what did that do for you? How did you get ready to win this? Um, I knew we were ranked number one, but throughout the season we were ranked one and two back and forth with Harper. So I knew we had confidence. I knew that we could win this. And the confidence helped a lot. Being confident and not cocky is the difference. So we were confident enough that we could win this thing. So we just trusted our coaches and trusted our, our practice. We trusted our teammates to do what they had to do, and we did that. All right, so you just won the Track Athlete of the Year. What does the future hold for you? Hopefully big things. Um, I've been working my butt off to get here. Um, coming here was my first choice, but it's probably my best choice I can make. So hopefully, come here, continue to get my grades up. Doing, I mean, my times are fine, so hopefully I can um, have a very bright future. Uh, I pray I can, <laughs> and I believe it. So. All right, Philly guy, how did it feel to come across that finish line first? That last lap was very emotional because, I don't know, that, that hit me because that, that was going to be my last lap in that track running for HTC. And I was going as fast as I can and I was just like, oh, national champ finally. And, and my last meet was just a very mixed feeling. It's in a good way. How does it feel to win this team national championship? I don't. I, I can't explain it in words because I've never been into this kind of team before. Um, last year we thought we had it, and we we came. We didn't have depth. This year we knew we could do it if everyone did what they're supposed to do. And actually getting it was very special. And I'm very proud of my team and everyone that was part of this program. So Andrew, I know you're very close with Phil Agat. Um, how did it feel to get this national championship with him on your, your sophomore season? It was definitely very good. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was horrible. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's that's what the whole goal was starting the beginning of the season. That's what we were training for the, all the months that we were training and everything. And definitely to do it with some of like my best friends and stuff and I feel like that's one of my best friends so that's definitely means a lot too and I mean I, this is my sixth year of running and so it's definitely nice to be able to finally win something big like this and 
national championship is pretty cool. <laughs> It's a pleasure to welcome NJCAA Co-Coach of the Meet and Co-Coach of the Year, Steve Musselman. Welcome, Coach. Thank you, Diane. At what point during this meet did you know you had the championship locked down? I think it was after the 200 meters where we came in uh, first and third. We still had a couple races left, but I knew we pretty well had it locked up by that point. Was there a significant event that really solidified the championship? I think it was... And, and overall team performance that we saw, like I just said, I knew after the 200, we, it was a done deal. But then the next race was the 5,000 meters, and Phil Agott and Andrew fought the Harper kids the whole way. And Chris Nash and Peter were throwing uh, the discus down below, and they kept coming up giving reports. So even though, back in my mind, it was over, the, the kids were still fighting for points. Now, Coach, you started this program back in 1985. What does this national title mean to you personally? It's something that I've always dreamed of. Uh, I've, I've been part of a national championship team as a, as a runner. Um, at Frostburg, we came close a couple of times, but actually seeing all the pieces come together, having the staff to, to put the pieces in the right place, and then letting the kids perform. The, the last day of the meet, we went to an abbreviated format because we knew storms were coming. And that morning, I'm walking down the hill, I see Pet Grave and Lang, two of her premier sprinters. I said, look, here's what's going to happen today. It's, it's going to be tough. It's, you know, as we put it, it's going to suck, but it's going to suck for everybody. And you guys need to step up. And they did. And that's what, that was the big difference. We were tougher. We wanted more than other teams that day. Well, Coach, congratulations on your first national title for the college, for the sport, and for you personally. Thank you, Diane. It, it's, it's quite an experience. Up next, we'll hear from co-head coach Eric Henlon. Dragon's Lair Update will be back after a short break. Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. Joining me in the studio is NJCAA Co-Coach of the Meet and Co-Coach of the Year, Eric Henlon. Welcome, Coach. Hey, thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me here. Congratulations oh. on the national championship. Oh. Oh, you're welcome. First one in college history. Yes, yes, I'm really delighted to know that we were able to pull this one off. Now tell me a little bit about your roster. It features athletes from all over the country. How did this team come together? Uh, we did some local recruiting from, from within Maryland, and um, we picked up some outstanding local athletes, um, Jail Petgrave and Egda Pruss. And then um, we got an email from a kid out in California wanted to come to school here. And then I, I started to call him and make contacts. Now who is this? This is um, a kid by the name of Darius Bell. Tell us more about Darius Bell and his story about coming here and how special he is. He called me that he wanted to change the environment and, um, and I told him that that'd be a good idea. He said, I said, how would you pay for school? Where would you stay? And he said he had a, aunt live out here in um, Charles County. So I said, I said, Darius, this is going to be a long haul for you, traveling all the way from Charles County to be, come to school here. And I tried to discourage him several times from not, not to do this and tried to talk to him about going to PG instead of coming to Howard, come to college. And he looked at me and said, Coach, I really don't want to do that. I want to come to Howard, come to college, right? And I said, why? What's the reason? And he said, I talked to several coaches when I was looking at a school to go. And he said, you were the only coach that I would want to compete for. And I said, why? And he said, because you were the only coach who did not talk to me about sports. And he said, you talked to me about school, academics. And he said, he found that very impressive. And he said, this is where I want to be. And he was in school and he did a great job for us. So what do you mean by a great job? What did he do? What did he do out in Penn Relays? Well, what makes this guy so special? Well, he was unbeaten 
all year in the high jump, everywhere we took him to jump. He jumped, um, his, his highest height was seven feet, two inches. Um, we took him to the pen relay and he finished second overall in the colleges. He lost out in a jump off to a kid out from Duke University, which I think was outstanding. And I must say, I give all credit um, to Darius and his coach, Robert Eldridge. Now, was there a significant event that solidified the championship? I would say the acquisition of the field events that really turned this thing around for us. Because what happened in the past, we were able to have good sprinters and distance, but we were not able to put together a strong field event team. So with Darius being a jumper, and we knew right away that this kid could score 30 points. And then we got Chris Nash and then Peter, and then we said, okay, this looking good. I think we may have a great chance. So they were transfers then? Yes. We, have, we had one from um, University of Maryland, and we wow. had one from UMBC. Talk about the role your coaching staff played in preparing the student athletes for the Nationals. What we did this year in particular, we tried to um, specialize the program in bringing more coaches on so that the kids could get more attention. So we give them maximum attention. Um, and then we, we believe that that would make them improve faster and they get more attention. They will be more focused on the task. So tell me, what does this national championship mean for the program? As a matter of fact, I always believe that track and field is the foundation of all sports. That has always been my philosophy. And if the track program wins the national championship, it will serve, it will serve as a springboard for all the other sports. And, and that's what I'm hoping that we can get out of this championship. That not only it, it develops track and field, just track and field, but it helps all the other sports, the basketball, the, the lacrosse, so they, have people, they can see something they can inspire towards. And number one, we do it so they can do it too. Coach, what's our chances for next year? Chances is great. We can win again. Well, congratulations on this year, and thank you for joining me in the studio. Uh, you're welcome, Dan. It's time for men's lacrosse. With a Region 20 tournament berth on the line, Howard takes on CCBC Catonsville. Will Howard put an end to the Cardinals season? Or will Catonsville score the upset? Bruce Hoosier anchors our men's lacrosse coverage. Thanks, Diane. I'm here with lacrosse analyst Chris Carey. Howard is 0-4 in games decided by one goal. Chris, this is the playoffs. We could see another close one. What will it take for the Dragons to beat Catonsville? Well, Bruce, for the Dragons to win, they have to hold on to the ball on offense and take good shots. Defensively, they need to play smart and not let up easy goals. Derek Taylor is the Cardinals' top playmaker. Chris, what makes Taylor hard to stop? Bruce, Derek Taylor is a phenomenal athlete with great stick skills. He's able to move through traffic and set himself up with easy goals. The winner moves on. The loser goes home. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. 10-10 left in the third. Aaron Foster behind the goal. Passes to Kai Salmi. He steps, shoots, and puts it in. Ground ball battle, scooped up by Jeremy Frosch. Passes ahead to David Nesbitt. We are all tied at seven. Matt Morton passes to Tom Klotz. Over to Nick Wynn. Give back to Klotz. Great movement to find the open shot and retake the lead. Kai Salmi to Nick Wynn. The bounce shot is good. Howard up by two. Fourth quarter, Derek Taylor not giving up the ball. Fakes left. Taylor makes an aggressive move through two defenders and finds the back of the net. Howard looks for an opening against the zone. Tom Klotz passes to Brock Wendt. He fires a cannon and it's good. Howard leads 10-8. Midfielder Taylor, sprinting from behind the net, slides in front of the goal, shoots and scores. After a Hail Mary clear, Greg Aben shoe and charges the empty net. We are headed to overtime. Great ball movement and a great move by Aben Schoen to sneak up and be there for the easy goal. Second overtime, Howard controlling possession. Went slides a pass to Zach Wheeler. Takes the shot and it's good. Howard pulls off the victory. Oh. 
Howard travels to Essex in search of the program's first road win against the Knights. Chris, how can Howard make history? Well, Howard can score the upset by keeping the ball on their offensive end and controlling the clock. They do not want to let the Knights' big scorers touch the ball. Essex has won 21 of the last 26 region championships. This season, the Knights are averaging 16 goals per game. Chris, what does Essex like to do on offense? Well, Bruce, Essex likes to work the ball around, get defenses unsettled, and find the easy goals. They also want their star player, Rossi, to have a lot of shots on goal. Howard and Essex battle for a berth in the Region 20 Championship. Attackman Joel Linkus keeps the ball, sprints past five Howard defenders and makes him pay. Essex in control, Linkus behind the goal, passes to Brian White for a quick stick. Essex is off to a fast start, easily finding open men. Ian McDonald feeds to Mitty Joe Balistari. The shot is good, and Essex increases the lead 8-2. Third quarter, Tom Klotz to Brock Wendt. Feed to Zach Wheeler. Count it. Sloppy sliding and good passing lead to an easy goal for Wheeler. Sterling Teal with a fast break. North-south, the shot is good. Six minutes to go in the third. Kai Salmi up against the long pole. He gets his hands free, high to low. Great ball control by Ansi, but the goalie saw the shot the whole time. Tony Rossi fires a cannon and the goal is good. Essex dominated the game from the start and the Dragons just couldn't keep up. Now it's time for women's lacrosse. With an automatic Final Four bid on the line, Howard takes on Hartford. These teams have already played three physical head-to-head -head games this season. Hartford held Howard to nine goals in their last meeting. Chris, what are the Dragons looking to do on offense? Bruce, Howard definitely wants to get more shots on goal than they had last game. They will want to start the game strong offensively and keep the tempo high. Hartford is number four in the national poll. Eight Fighting Owls ranked among the nation's top 48 point scorers. Only the undefeated Monroe Tribunes have more players in the top 48. Chris, how can the Dragons slow down Hartford? Well, Bruce, Hartford's transition was much improved in their last meeting, and the Lady Dragons have been working hard on doubling in the midfield and riding hard from the goal is clear. If they can keep the ball from going over the 50, they can slow down the Owls' offensive threats. The winner advances to the Final Four. The loser goes home. Howard and Harford take the field next. Harford with a fast break. Pass ahead to Katie Spence. The shot is good. Sierra Sattler passes to Sarah Lebrun. She fires it past the keeper, 7-1 Harford. Maya Fairweather sprints past defenders and buries it high. Great run, straight to goal. Almost impossible to save. Great pass to Maddie for another easy goal. Emily Nosek with a fast break passes to Katie Spence. She fires it past the keeper to extend the lead, 13-6. Maddie Pullman showing off her footwork, takes it to the goal and makes him pay. Katie Spence connects with Colleen Chassain. Quick stick, shot is good. Pullman, showing her resilience, takes it to the net. Maddie really stepped up in the second half, taking more shots and ending up with eight goals. Harford ends Howard's season, moves on to Nationals. This summer, we will relive the most compelling moments from a historic year at Howard Community College. Tune in Friday, July 5th, for the best of Dragon's Lair update. Thanks for watching, and remember, Go Dragons!